Discussing the disciples, what color were they? Well, I don't think we know that for certain. But they were Hebrews, were they not? That's right. As was Jesus. Jesus was also a Hebrew. Why don't you just ask your question? What color were the original Hebrews? I have told you that we don't know that for certain. Then you can't believe for certain that Jesus was white. Because history teaches us that Jesus was born in a region where the people had color. There's proof in the very Bible that you ask us to read in Revelation's first chapter, verse 14 and 15, that Jesus had hair like wool and feet the color of brass. Just, just what are you saying? I'm not saying anything. I'm proving to you that Jesus was not, and I might quote one of our Indian brothers, he was not a pale face. Uh-huh. Amen. Oh, confess that I learned in my first meeting with Devon all these years I thought the Sabbath was Sunday yeah. I've been going to church we say worship on the Sabbath wor worship on the Sabbath in the Baptist Church and you corrected me you said no Sunday is the first day of the week yeah. Sabbath is Friday sundown to Saturday Sunday. that's right that's I right. stand correct
number is 1492. Christopher Columbus is about to embark on his world-shattering voyage to the Americas. And on his way to the coast, he stops off here at Granada. He's the honoured guest of a ceremony hosted by the King and Queen of Spain, Ferdinand and Isabella. They are celebrating a grand victory. Up until this day, Granada had been ruled by Muslims. But Isabella has managed to wrestle control from them. Ferdinand and Isabella's victory marks a turning point for Spain and for Europe. The Middle Ages are over and the West is about to embark on a new epoch of power and discovery. We tend to think of this as the beginning of an era. In fact, it's the climax of a forgotten chapter in European history. The rise and fall of Islam in the West. <laughs> Roger Kipling, who wrote, East is East and West is West, and never the twain shall meet. And it's a worldview that still has currency today. Islam and Christianity seem to have become ideological monoliths, citadels whose gates are firmly closed to one another. But they haven't always lived such separate lives. In the year 711 AD, Muslim forces invaded Spain and created a society so rich and so powerful, it was the envy of the known world. This wasn't the rigid, ferocious Islam of our imaginations, but a progressive, sensuous, intellectually curious culture that for a number of spine-tingling years looks set to sweep through the whole of Europe. It is an incredible story but one that has been systematically written out of history. The one that has been systematically written out of history. Systematically written out of history. But one that has been systematically written out of history. After the Catholic monarchs took over the city of Granada, they began to destroy all evidence that the Muslims had ever been in Spain. In the following century, the Spanish authorities persecuted and expelled 300,000 Muslims and burned as many as a million Arabic books.
This was an astonishing act of ethnic cleansing. It put an end to a civilization which had flourished in Spain for 700 years. These people have become known as the Moors. Propaganda, sparked by the Crusades, has given us an enduring image. The diabolical Moor, a dark-skinned, savage, alien enemy. character is a complete invention and tells us nothing about who these people really were. Now archaeologists and historians are starting to piece together the real story of the Moors in Spain. They're uncovering the remains of hidden cities, discovering the role of Muslims in the revival of the classics and decoding the meaning of Islamic buildings. picture has emerged. I'm going to use this new research to explore what happened when East met West in Europe. If there is one place which challenges the stereotype of the treacherous, bloodthirsty Moor, it's here, the Alhambra Palace in Granada. The Alhambra is one of the most complete medieval Islamic palaces in the whole world. It was built by the Muslim kings of Granada in the 14th century at the height of their power. 